So I called this more friction examples. More friction examples. Example one. Consider the bench below, which is being pulled by student number one across a rough surface at constant speed. You know what? I should probably underline the phrase constant speed. You know, let, let, let's, instead of just making this a generic bench, let's make it the benches at the back of the gym. You know the wooden benches they have back there that you got to slide around? So let's suppose Yosef is pushing the bench or pulling the bench at a constant speed. Suddenly, student number two pushes down on the bench with a force F. Ethan comes along and decides, I'm going to sit on the bench while he's pushing it. Yeah, I've seen that happen before. If student number one, if Yosef maintains the constant applied force as before, what happens to A, the weight, B, the normal force, C, friction, and D, the motion of the bench? You know what's going to help me answer this, Yosef? Yeah. Now, they did one here. I think if I look here, I might quibble a bit. I think gravity and the normal force should be the same length, so I might lengthen gravity just a tiny, tiny, tiny bit. But I get what they're getting at. Oh, and because it's constant speed, I might argue that friction and F applied should be the same length. I might lengthen friction a tiny bit. But I, I get what they're getting at here. Okay. It's the second one. They've only done part of the free body diagram, Yosef. So the second one, the extra push, that's Ethan sitting on the bench. What are the forces acting on? Let's get the obvious one. Gravity. Has gravity changed from before? So same length as before, I'll eyeball it about like that. What else? Normal force. Bigger, smaller, or the same size as mg? I'm going to give you a hint. It's not the same size. Are we sinking into the ground like quicksand? Are we flying here like Superman? What that means is all the forces down have to equal all the forces. How many forces are pointing down? There's two of them. Normal force is having to cancel out mg plus Ethan's extra push. And what that means is the normal force is larger than mg. Has F applied changed? No, it says maintains the constant applied force, same as before. What's going to happen to friction? Why? Friction is what times what? No, it's not. Friction is what times what? What happened to the normal force? So what happens to friction? I'll exaggerate it so it's obvious. So now let's answer the questions. Part A says, what happens to the weight? What force is weight another name for? Mg. Did the mass of the bench change? Did the 9.8 change? So that stayed the same. No change. What happened to the normal force? The normal force increased. My abbreviation for increase is an arrow pointing up. OK. What happened to friction? Why? If normal force goes up, friction goes up. And then D says, basically, what's going to happen to the motion? Well, looking at this free body diagram, What's going to happen to the bench? Slow down and probably come to a stop really quick if it was actually Ethan pushing on it. The harder he pushes on it, the faster it'll come to a stop because the bigger the normal force, therefore the bigger friction, fr uh, friction is. If he just pushes on it a little bit because it was originally in balance, he would have made friction a tiny bit bigger. It'll slowly come to a stop but over a longer distance. But yeah, no matter what, it's going to slow and then stop. Is that okay? It says, explain your answer using principles of physics. I think I did here with my free body diagram in that list. I'd live with that. Maybe a couple of more English words. But that's a pretty good explanation with your free body diagram. Okay. There can be friction on an object even when it's at rest, when it's not sliding. 
because the hills, those microscopic hills and valleys that we talked about on the atomic scale will, 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 will lock up, they'll settle into each other. And so as soon as you try and apply a small force, they've sunk into each other. They prevent the object from sliding. All of you right now, with one finger, very lightly tug on your desk towards you. From underneath, from underneath. So hook your finger underneath. Is the desk moving? Don't pull hard enough. Don't pull so hard that the desk accelerates, but still apply a force. Is it possible to apply a force and not have an object accelerate? Okay, how's that working? The force of friction on an object at rest we call that static friction because static means not moving or not changing. So let's suppose I apply, if we look at example two, oh, we're gonna get to vote again, oh boy. Suppose I pull on my lab desk with a force of two newtons and the desk does not move. Which of the following is true? Option A says static friction is greater than two newtons. Option B says static friction is exactly two newtons. Option C says static friction is less than two newtons. Option D says there's no static friction. So if I pull on my desk, if you pull on your desk, with two newtons of force and the desk does not move, which of the following statements is true? Who says... Mr. Duick, this is so easy. A, static friction is clearly bigger than two newtons. It's A. Not ah, B. One, two, three. Sorry? What are you going with? C, no, static friction is less than two newtons. No friction. Three of you I missed. I'm taking names in the next vote. Make sure you vote next time because I missed three of you. Well, I am pulling on my desk right now with about two newtons. Is my desk accelerating? Be obvious. So that means the forces must be, I'm looking for the stress letter B. So if I'm pulling with two newtons towards me, how big must friction be exactly as a number in the opposite direction? Two newtons. What if A was correct? What if friction was bigger than two newtons? Which way would this have to be accelerating? It'd be a weird world. I would tug on it and it would go ricocheting backwards away from me and knock people over. Is that what happens? So A can't be right because it's not accelerating. The forces must be balanced. What's the correct answer here? B. Boy, we didn't do well on that one. Okay. Um, Nick, which one of Newton's laws did I use to answer that question? So, since Nick got it wrong, we'll write out A equals zero, so forces must be balanced. However, what could he have written? Newton's what? It's technically, it's first. But again, Nick, don't feel bad. I, I, I told you, you don't need to memorize this. I'm just saying you can if you want to because you're lazy, but you don't have to. And in fact, probably on a test, I'd probably write them out anyways just in case I got them mixed up, right? Um, I'm pulling with two Newtons. How big must friction be in this direction, in the opposite direction, if it's not accelerating? Two Newtons. Static friction is a bit of a weird one. It's only as big as it needs to be. Now I'm pulling harder. I'm pulling with five Newtons. How big is static friction in the opposite direction if it's not accelerating? Now I'm pulling harder, you can't tell, but I am. I'm pulling with about eight newtons. How big must friction be? Static friction is as big as it needs to be up to a point. Suppose the biggest that static friction can be is 20 newtons. If I pull with 18, how big is friction in your direction? What if I pull with 18.5, how big is friction in your direction? 
What if I pull with 19.9? It's 19.9, but I can feel right now it's just about ready. It wants to start to accelerate. What was the biggest I said friction could be? 20. What if I pull with 20.01? It's going to start to accelerate. That's the second that I'll have an unbalanced force. So to get an object moving in the first place, Julian, you need to overcome something that we call static friction. And again, static friction just matches what you're doing until it can't match it, and then it'll start to accelerate. How many of you have ever moved really heavy furniture by sliding it across the floor? A couple of you? Okay. What takes more oomph? Getting the furniture sliding or keeping it sliding? Yosef, what? It's harder to get it sliding. In fact, you can ease up a little bit once it starts to slide. Okay. Can you read to me this heading right here, Yosef? This is in response to a question a student asked a few years ago. A student asked me that question. Mr. Duick, why is it that when I'm sliding something heavy, once I get it moving, I don't need to push as hard? I am not going to ask you this on a test. This is purely for nerd trivia. But it turns out there are, Yosef, for every situation. Static friction acts when you have two objects at rest relative to each other. As an example, the force that keeps a car parked on a hill from sliding down the hill is static friction up the hill. Oh, another good example of static friction, if you've ever just for fun tried to push against your friend and they've pushed back, you've had kind of a pushing war, but both of you don't go anywhere, static friction through your shoes is what was keeping you with your acceleration of zero. The force to overcome static friction is always slightly bigger than the force needed to overcome sliding friction. Sliding friction is called kinetic friction. And we're not sure why that's the case. We know it is. You all noticed that. Okay. So I said presumably because when I dove into the research about five years ago, this was the current thinking, but the paper that I saw said, this makes sense, but we haven't come up with an experiment to prove it yet. Okay. We think maybe it's because to overcome static friction, you have to break the welds of those objects that have settled into those microscopic hills and valleys. That's not a great analogy. How many of you have been driving on a really bumpy gravel road? A really bumpy one. Okay. Presley, have you noticed if you go really slow, your tires go into every single pothole, all the way to the bottom, and then all the way out. But if you go at a little bit of speed, you can sometimes find a speed where it's still bumpy, but your tires are actually clearing most of the pothole and just clipping the far end. It's, it's, it's smoothed out a little bit. We think something like that is happening on the atomic level with static versus kinetic friction. When the objects are at rest, they've sunk all the way into the bottom of those potholes, but once you get them sliding, those microscopic grooves and valleys, they're just clipping the edge and smoothing it out a bit. Coming up with an experiment to prove that, last I checked, had eluded us, because this is at the subatomic level. We, it's not like we can shine a camera on stuff that that's small. We have to come up with an experiment that proves that, and that's not that easy. But we're going to assume, because it does make sense, that maybe that's the explanation, Julian. So what does that mean? If I wanted to be completely accurate, I would say something like a five kilogram object sits on a surface with a static coefficient of, fri coefficient of friction of 0.3. That's the one that I'll use when it's at rest. And a kinetic coefficient of friction of 0.25. That's the one that I'll use when it's moving. Shane, what does A want me to find? This is the job for a free body diagram. I'm going to do my free body diagram, Shane, right here in the margin. There's the object. What are the forces acting on it? Okay, You're going to start to notice I'm going to give you fewer and fewer hints. You'll notice I didn't say get the obvious one. I just asked what are the forces acting on it. As we progress, I'll give you fewer and fewer hints in our free body diagrams. What else? Bigger, smaller, or the same size as MG? think so. 
<laughs> what else? Well, it's asking me to find the force required to move the object. Really, it's asking me to find an F applied. Okay. And if we're finding the force required to move it, the tipping point is when friction is exactly the same size as F applied. As soon as you pull harder than that, it'll accelerate. Okay? So for part A, what's the force required to move the object? I'm going to argue that F applied is going to be the same size as friction. Friction chain is what times what? Which mu? Have we started sliding yet? I'm going to use the static coefficient of friction times the normal force. I don't know the normal force. Oh, but look, 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 look. I know the force the same size as the normal force. Sorry? Yeah, Fn is the same size as Fn, Captain Obvious. But what other forces? Because I don't know Fn. What? What? Yes. So, if I want to find friction, it's going to be static mu times mg. What was static mu? 0.3. What was m? 5. What was g? 9.8. How hard do I need to pull harder than to get this thing to start to accelerate in the first place? What do you get? Now's the time to go to your calculator. I know. So, what should you have done? at the beginning of class, powered your phone off and done a swap instead of having me come down on you like the wrath of God and humiliate you on YouTube that I'm taping. Oh, Mr. Duick, this is going to be for posterity. Sorry, YouTube, I had two students that, oh, disappointed me tremendously by showing up unprepared with no calculator. But don't feel bad, YouTube. They will suffer my wrath for the remainder of the day. Be afraid. What'd you get? Even? Okay. Units, it's a force. So how hard do I need to pull to get this thing to accelerate? Actually, 14.7000000, anything more than 14.7, and now this will start to accelerate. You okay with that? Okay. Trevor, in part B, how many newtons of force are we pulling with? Will it accelerate? How hard do we need to pull to get it to accelerate? So will it accelerate? Say it again. So what's the acceleration exactly as a number? So it said find the acceleration. Zero. How big is the force of friction? Don't tell me 14.7. How big is the force of friction exactly as a number have to be? Nope. Help me out, folks. Why 10? Are we accelerating? So that means forces must be, I'm looking for the starts letter B. So if you're pulling forwards with 10 newtons, how big is friction backwards? Exactly. What if I was pulling with 12? 12 okay. Got, got the little trick we used there? Yeah, 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 yeah. Good. Good. Ooh. Okay. Andrew, how hard are we pulling in part C? Will we accelerate? Yeah. So now, just imagine that this arrow is bigger than this arrow. Who's winning? Who's losing? Equals what, what? There's my setup. It says find the force of friction and then find the acceleration. Okay. Well, friction, Andrew, is what times what? From your green sheet. Yep. Are we sliding now or are we at rest? Then it's going to be mu k, the kinetic coefficient of friction. The 0.25. I don't know the normal force. Oh, well, look, 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 how big is the normal force exactly the same size as? Okay, so it's going to be 0.25 times m times g. It's going to be a little smaller than the 14.7.
Daniel, what you get now that you have your calculator? Better be using your calculator. Well, it's going to be 49 divided by 2. Sorry, divided by 4. 10, 12, 12.25? Yeah. Units, Andrew. It's a force, so... Okay. So it said, find the force of friction. Check. What's the second thing they want me to find? What's ACC apostrophe N? Yeah, I didn't need to explain that. Okay. Um, well... Trevor's theorem. Get the A by itself, huh? So A is going to end up being F applied minus friction all over M. How big was F applied? They said 20 minus, how big is friction? Not 14.7. Now that we've started sliding, mu got smaller, 12.25 divided by, what was the mass? Five? Do that one in your head, Mr. Dude. Or maybe. What's a good trick to divide by 5? Divide by 10 and then double it. That'll work. So it's going to be 20 take away 12 is 8. It's going to be 7.75. It's 0.775 times 2. So there's going to be a 1.4, a 1.5, a 1.55. Okay. Yeah? Units. Andrew, it's an acceleration. Good. Okay. So we're mixing and matching and moving around a little bit. So have I explained why it's easier to keep something moving once you get it moving? Having said all that, I think there's a question like this in the homework. I'm not going to ask you this on a test. On a test, Danielle, if I give you a mu, it's going to be static, kinetic, whatever. You can use it in any situation. We're going to pretend there's just one type of friction. So I wrote here to keep the math nice. We're going to keep both, we're going to treat both types of friction as the same thing. So friction is going to be what times what? Everybody? Mu times the normal force, where mu is what we call the coefficient of friction. I'm not going to distinguish between kinetic or static. And we figure out the normal force from an FBD. What's FBD in a brief for? From a free body diagram, because there's no formula on your formula sheet for normal force either. Speaking of normal force, let's muck around with it. I've got three questions coming up here, A, B, and C. And if you notice, Ava, B and C have extra vertical forces in them. See it? In one, we're pushing down with an extra 55 newtons. In the other one, we're lifting up with an extra 55 newtons. And it's saying, find the maximum force of friction. Find how hard you would need to pull more than in order to get it to accelerate. Technically, this is mu static. This is the static coefficient of friction, but whatever. Okay, I'll zoom in on A. What does it want me to find? The force of what? Hmm. Any thoughts on how I want to start? Free body diagram, you say. I like that. What are the forces acting on this 8 kilogram mask? The obvious one. Which way? What else? Which way? Bigger, smaller, or the same size as mg? I agree. What is this question asking me to find? Friction. Friction is what times what? Good. Mu times, I don't know the normal force. Ah, oh, but look, 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 look. Another force the same size as the normal force. What's got to be the same size as the normal force in this specific question? Mg. So if you want me to find friction, it's going to be 0.35 times 8 times 9.8, which is what? Even? Give me the, all the sig figs. What is it? It's going to be 
27.44 newtons. What does that mean? If I look at the bottom, it says, so to get A accelerating to the right, I would need to pull with more than 27.44 newtons. Okay? What about situation B? Well, it still wants me to find friction. Jed, I still think it's going to be a good job for a... What are the forces acting on it? Jed, get the obvious one. Thank you for getting the obvious one. Um, good. What else? Bigger, smaller, or the same size as mg? Why? You're correct. Because it's having to cancel out mg and what else? The 55. So the normal force, I'll exaggerate it, is going to be bigger. What does this question want me to find? Friction. What's friction always? What times what? Mu times the normal force. Do I know mu? Yeah. I don't know the normal force. And I can't say, oh, but look, 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 look. This is a bit more complicated. You know what? I'm going to do some physics over here. I'm going to write another equation. And my other equation jet is going to be vertical. Are we sinking into the ground like quicksand? Are we flying into like Superman? What that really means is all the forces down have to equal all the forces. What are the what are all the forces down? Your hint is there's two of them. So mg plus I gotta be fussy. You said 55 and 9.8. 9.8 is the acceleration. Don't say that again when you mean mg force. Don't forget that. Has to equal what's everything up? Everything down has to equal everything up. What is from my free body diagram? Everything pointing up. No, no, just tell me. From my free body diagram, what's pointing up? Yeah. So you ready, Jet? I would say mu times the normal force. I don't know. Oh, yes, I do. It's going to be mu bracket mg plus 55. That's mu times the normal force in this specific situation. Let's plug in numbers. What's mu? I don't know. What's mu with you? 0.35. M is 8 times 9.8 plus 55. I think almost all of you should be able to type this in in one line as written. In fact, the brackets around the 0.35, I don't need on my calculator. I'm going to go 0.35 times, but I'm going to open up a bracket. 8 times 9.8 plus 55, close bracket. And I get 46.69. If you didn't get that, now is your chance to ask. Shane, get that okay? You have to do it with the brackets. Because friction is mu times the normal force. And the normal force is mg plus 55. Getting it or not? And it's a force, so jet newtons. Okay. Presley, what does it want me to find in the third diagram? Friction. So again, it's going to be... Oh, by the way, so to get B accelerating to the right, I would need to pull with more than 46.69 newtons. Right? Okay. What is uh, this one also wanted me to find friction? So Presley, let's start out the same way. Oh, you know what? Free body diagram first. What are the forces acting on it? Get the obvious one. What else? Bigger, smaller, or the same size as mg? 
Yeah. I'll exaggerate it so it catches my eye. So I would start out by saying to myself, self, friction is mu times the normal force. Looks like a W. Times the normal force. And I would say, oh, what's mu? I don't know what's mu. Uh, 0.35? I don't know the normal force. And it's not as easy as A where I can just say, oh, but look, 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 look. Let's write a vertical force equation. Are we sinking into the ground like quicksand? Are we flying here like Superman? I'm going to do my vertical force equation over here on the left. I think, well, what can I write? I'll give you a hint. Mg. What does that equal? One of those is correct. Is the normal force and the 55 in the same direction? Then both positive. Really, what I'm saying is, if you're not sinking into the ground like quicksand, and you're not flying here like Superman, forces are balanced, which means everything, all the forces pointing down, have to equal all the forces pointing. Yeah. Problem, I want to get the normal force by itself, because that's what I need to, well, how would I get the Fn by itself? How do I move the 55 over? Yep, it's adding, it's all subtracted. So I get this, the normal force, is going to be mg take away 55. Now I can walk over here. Sorry, I moved over a little bit. Maybe, can I keep it on one screen? A little bit. Okay. It's going to end up being mu mg take away 55. You know what? I was going to write everything out, but I think if I look at my calculator, all I need to do is change this plus sign right here to a what? I'm just going to backspace edit and do that and save myself some writing and some time. I noticed that. What'd you get? Can't. 0.35 times bracket 8 times 9.8 .8 minus 55? Nope, you're going to get 8.19. So don't clear your calculator. Let me come look. Pause. Okay, so I get uh, 8.19 newtons. And so how hard would I need to pull now? Uh, 8.19. And what I'm really getting you notice is, to notice is if you lift up while sliding something, friction gets what, bigger or smaller? Because normal force gets what? Bigger or smaller? Smaller. If you push down, which you don't do very often, but... Oh, who? anybody uh, play football here? Yeah? Have you heard the phrase, low man wins? Why? That's when tackling, but what about at the line? Why does low man win? Because if I can get below you... I'm lifting you up, which is reducing your normal force, and I'm pushing down on me, which is increasing my normal force. By the way, between the two linemen that are pushing on each other, it's friction versus friction. That's the force that's going on there. So lifting you up lowers your friction, increases my friction. Yeah, low man's going to win at the line, too. Good physics there. Um, example five. We're going to do these ones both simultaneously. So just draw a line down the middle of the page, kind of like that. It looks like in both of these, we have the same coefficient of friction, 0.12, the same applied force, 20. But in the right-hand one, we're pushing down a little bit, which is going to change the normal force. OK. I can do this. I can do this. It says write a vertical for you know what I should do before I even jump on in what do you think FDD. free body diagram Julian what are the forces on this 10 kilogram mass get the obvious one what else bigger smaller or the same size as mg okay and then I noticed there's this 20 what have we called the 20 the mystery pay force coming from off the page yep so let's put an arrow and I'll just put an equals F 
applied. That's enough for me to note that I noted it. What else? So, what force is that? Friction. Yeah, don't put mu on your free body diagram. The force is called friction. Mu is used in the calculation of friction, but it's not the force. Okay. What about on the right-hand side? Get the obvious one. Same as before, I think. What else? Bigger, smaller, or the same size as mg? Why bigger? Yeah, there's an extra force pushing down, so I'll exaggerate it so it catches my eye. And then, Julian, we still have F applied. And we'll have friction. i got to be honest. I'm not sure if friction is going to be bigger than F applied or smaller. I'll assume it's smaller. I'll know I've guessed wrong if I get a negative acceleration. We did one like that yesterday. Right? Okay. Well, A says write a vertical force equation, Julian. Uh, on the left-hand side, are we sinking into the ground like quicksand? Are we flying into like Superman? What really means is all the forces down equal all the forces. So what's my equation? Mg equals, that's everything down, equals everything up. What's everything up? Look at the free body diagram, not at me. Mg down equals what up? Yes! So here, mg equals fm. Or you could have said fn equals mg. Can't say that on the right-hand side. I can still say everything down has to equal everything up because we're not sinking into the ground like quicksand or flying through like Superman. But, Julian, what's everything down? Your hint is there are two things. And? Or supposed, no, weight's the same as gravity. Gravity, mg, and there's another arrow holding down. What's the other arrow holding down? No. Uh, what? Just tell you how big it is. Okay. Uh, everything down. mg and 15 has to equal everything up. Everything up. Okay. Yep. There you go. Got it right? Okay. Uh, Daniela, what's B want me to find? Well, friction is going to be mu times the normal force for both of these. Right? Right. Do I know mu? I don't know the normal. Wait a minute. Yes, I do. What's the normal force the same size as? So I can go mu m g. In fact, I can crunch this now. It's going to be 0.12 times 10 times 9.8. I can do this in my head. It's going to be 98 times 0.12. It's going to be 9.8 plus 1.96. It's going to be 9.8, 10.8, I think. Seven six is that right? I think it's eleven point seven six, isn't it? Well, let me show off and get to four sig figs in my head, little miss. I'm going to round. Up. Yeah, okay, eleven point seven six. I'm going to four sig figs also because I looked at the last couple of questions and I said I'm going to use this, so I'll carry the extra digits, and I wanted to totally show off. On uh, the right hand side, I don't know the number. Oh yes, I do. What can I replace the normal force with? Presley, what can I replace the normal force with? In brackets. So it's going to look like this. Mu bracket mg plus 15. Or if I go with the numbers, it's going to be 0.12 and then in brackets 10 times 9.8 plus 15. You're not owning your head, Mr. Well, maybe I can. It's going to be 98 plus 15. It's going to be 113. Sure, I can. It's going to be 11.3 plus 22.2.26. plus 2 11.3, 13.3, 13.56, I think. Carry the one right. Am I right? Is it 13.56? Now, if you didn't get that, don't clear your calculator. 
0.56, and that's also Newton's. Cool. Well, Daniel, it said write a horizontal force equation. I've scrolled down, but you have it in front of you. Look at your free body diagram horizontally. Who's winning? Yep. Who's losing? What does winner minus loser always equal? So I think it's going to be F applied minus friction equals MA. That's our horizontal force equation. What about on the right hand free body diagram? Who's winning? Firm, firm. Who's losing? Equals? Does that mean I'm going to get the same answer? No, because the numbers are going to be different. But it is the same tug of war. The tug of war is between F applied and friction. Riley, what does uh, D want me to do? Trevor's theorem. Right? Divide by M. Okay, I can do that. I can do that. So uh, D, change colors, Mr. Duick. D is going to be A equals, it's going to be F applied minus friction divided by M. Is that correct, Riley? I think, I think. Okay, well, let's plug in our numbers. Oh, I can totally do this one in my head. It's going to be F applied was 20 minus 11.76 divided by 10. Heck, Riley, I bet you can do it in your head. We're dividing by 10. Who needs a calculator, right? It's going to be 20 take away 11, which is what? Take away 0.7, 8.3. Take away that 6, 8.24, divided by 10, 0.824. Yes, I hope, I think. Yeah. Units, it's an acceleration. And I think on the right-hand side, same setup. A is going to be F applied minus friction divided by M, it's going to be 20 minus 13.56 divided by 10. Shall we try it in our head again, just for giggles? 0.644. See? Yeah, this one is dividing by 10, right? Even you can do, or I'll well, make that a better compliment. Did we get a positive answer? F applied was winning because we kind of guessed. A little bit more, we're done. In fact, one more and I'm going to press pause. No, that's a lie. Yeah, one more and I'm going to press pause. This page. Um, I introduced, Andrew, the concept of the coefficient of friction to you. You don't need to memorize any of this, but whenever I introduce a new concept, I like to give you an idea of what's really big and what's really small. So I found this online from a reliable source. These are some common coefficients of friction. Wood on wood, 0.25, fairly slippery, but not really slippery. Steel on steel is terrible. But we make all of our machinery out of steel pieces on steel pieces. Yeah, what do we do so that we don't... Huh? Lub yeah, when you lubricate it, it goes from 0.5 to about 0.1. Much better, much easier on the machinery, much less wear and tear, much less heat. Okay. Uh, rubber on dry asphalt, anywhere, this actually has a lot of variance, anywhere from about 0.4 to 0.7, depending on the temperature and what kind of tires we're talking about. But what I want you to notice is when it rains, what happens to the coefficient of friction? It divides by... What that means, how many of you are getting your licenses soon? Okay? That means when it's raining, Daniel, you need twice the distance that you're used to to come to a stop because friction is only half as big. I always have some idiot, I'm a good driver. You know, you, I'm sorry, mu is smaller. It doesn't matter how good a driver you are. A professional race driver will also realize I need more distance to stop. So slow down when it rains or snows. Right? Right. Uh, rubber on ice is really slippery. That's why walking, especially on really, really smooth ice, walking with rubber shoes is really tough. Steel on ice a little better, but still pretty slippery. Yeah, I have an answer. Yeah. Yeah. 
I think what that's doing is it's anticipating that one of your wheels might have less friction and start to spin. And so it might be locking the wheels together or maybe disjoining the wheels. I'd have to see exactly what it was doing so that the wheels can spin independently. We typically don't have systems like that on all the time because they're hard on the equipment and they lower your gas mileage. But in sketchy conditions, sure. Yeah. I'm willing to bet they're doing something like that. And it's all done through computer sensors and things like that. But I'm willing to bet the sensors are monitoring each tire to see if one of them is spinning or experiencing friction different from the other ones, and it'll do an adjustment. I don't think they're doing much more than that, but I'd have to dive into it. If you send me what type of car, I'll dive into it and what year. Can we have a coefficient of friction greater than one? Yes. In fact, rubber on glass has a mu of about 0.2. Trying to slide rubber across glass, really tough. It's why those uh, little thin plastic rubber stickers that you can kind of stick on glass, peeling them off, they're just sticking through friction. They're not sticking because they're sticky. Last one, and then we're going to press pause. A dragster tire has a coefficient of friction of 2.8. Shouldn't a tire with so much friction slow the dragster down? Using principles of physics, explain why a high coefficient of friction is essential for racing. Yeah? You know what this is a good job for? Talk me through the free body diagram, because I think you're right. What are the forces acting on it? Get the obvious one. Yeah. What else? Okay. Let's assume forwards is to the right. So which way do we want the dragster to accelerate? Forwards. Yes. So there's got to be a force that way. That should be level. That looks like it's slanty. What force is that? Yes. You're the first person to come up with it. All my previous classes, F applied, F inch. No, friction. This is why you can't drive on ice. Friction is what makes you go forwards. Friction is what times what? So how can we make friction bigger? Okay, that's one way. Also increase the normal force. What they do is they move the mass towards the back. If you ever see a dragster, you might notice their front wheels are barely touching the ground because the friction is coming from those big back tires. They've moved the mass as far back as is safely possible to give you as much of the mass spread over those back tires as a normal force to increase friction. What else do they do right before the match? It's not to impress the crowd. There's physics behind it. But what else do they always do? Yeah. Why? What's stickier, hot rubber or cold rubber? Okay? It's a little expensive on the tires, but makes a difference in the race. So, yeah, they've thought of this very much so. I lied. I need to get through this. This is how I got through this one with my other classes as well. So be patient, and thank you for your patience. This is one of those so easy that it's tough questions. It says this. A force of 120 newtons is needed to push a box along a level road at a steady speed. Of course, all of us would underline the phrase steady speed. If the force of gravity on the box is 250 newtons, what's the force of friction and what's the coefficient of friction? Well, clearly, how am I going to start this out? Julian, what are the forces acting on this object? Get the ob How big is gravity exactly in newtons? And thank you for being clever enough to say, oh, if Mr. Duick asks that, the question probably tells me. How, yes. Are we sinking into the ground like quicksand? No. Flying into the like Superman? No. So how big is the normal force exactly in Newtons? Yes. I'll add that to my free body diagrams just because I noticed that and it might come in handy. What else? Well, there's going to be an applied force forwards. How big is the applied force exactly in Newtons? Good. What am I missing? Bigger, smaller, or the same size as F applied? How do you know the same? So draw your arrow the same length. Nuji, what's A asking me to find? 
My first thought, don't write this down, look up. My first thought would be, well, duh, friction equals mu times the normal force. Why doesn't that help me at all? Yeah? Ah. Does that mean I can't do it? No, wait a minute. I know exactly how big friction has to be. Oh, this is why I meant by so easy that it's tough, because I've done a question like this in kids. No, mu! No. Friction has got to be 120 newtons. Steady speed. Nuji, what's B asking me to find? What symbol is that? What's the only equation that's got a mu in it? Friction equals mu times the normal force. Okay. Get the mu by itself. Here's yet another equation. We don't need to memorize it. How would I move the normal force over? The normal force is adding to the mu. There's a plus sign between them. I would say to you, no. What? Say it again. What? So you're telling me mu is friction divided by the normal force. Well, keep going, Nuji. How big is friction exactly as a number? How big is the normal force exactly as a number? It's going to be a little less than 0.5. I didn't do this in my head. I'm making a guess. Is it 0.48? I see the 12, and I know 12 goes into 48. That was just a 0.48? Units. Yeah, you know what? You can see it's newtons divided by newtons. The newtons would cancel. No units. Okay. 